the first time I was, I was here and it was beautiful. It was really, really beautiful. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it and, uh, and I've come again to be a blessing. And I must say this, um, Healing is Here Conference is solemnly our financial responsibility, not your own financial responsibility. But the pastor have refused to allow us to spend our money till date. He kept saying he will, he will do this, he will do that. He kept, he kept doing it. This is actually the first church, the first time. This is the 11th of Healing is Here conference we are doing in uh, two years. In about two years. Yeah. This is the 11th. And this is virtually the only one that the church <laughs> decided to be spending money to take care of everything. That's why the father I kept telling him, I said, no, pastor, don't worry, I have the money. I can do it. He said, don't worry, pastor, I will get back to you. And by the time we got there, he has already paid out the bill. So we really, really want to appreciate it. And my prayer is that the Lord will, will pay you back. Press down, shaking together and running over in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will blow up your ministry and the Lord will take you to a level that you never even believed that you get to in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a great privilege and a great honor that uh, you have given us your, your platform, your church. And I want to tell you the whole world is watching what we are doing here tonight, the whole world. I have friends in Japan, I have friends in America, I have friends in Britain who are watching this program we are doing. Uh, you see, so a few days ago, I was showing, I, I, I was telling them in the church, that was on Sunday, that uh, YouTube sent me our details and we discovered that in the past seven days, 1,300 people have viewed our YouTube channel. Have viewed our YouTube channel. So, you see, the world is now a global village. The world is a global village. Praise the Lord. So what we're doing tonight, you have given the whole world opportunity to actually hear the word of God. And I believe God that this word will prosper you too. If, you're, if you believe in your email, will be louder than this. In the name of Jesus. Okay, we have three nights to go. So let's start out tonight. Like they usually said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Praise God. So, Father God, thank you one more time for this privilege, for this opportunity to be a blessing to your, to your people. Father, give your word great utterance tonight. And let there be boldness in the house through the healings that we see here tonight and throughout the whole world in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to start from that same Isaiah that Pastor started sharing from. That's Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 to 5. Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 5. Hallelujah. Now, you see, many people don't know that one of the serious messages you should spend your time listening or watching is the subject of healing. Is the subject of healing. Now, Jesus Christ took a lot of his time teaching on this subject. And at the same time, also healing the sick. And God really wants us to understand deep things about the subject of healing. Now, you don't have to be in this meeting tonight because you are sick. But like I've said to several people and everywhere, Pastor, I've never seen anybody who prepare for sickness. But the truth is that you have to prepare for healing. I've never seen somebody who is preparing. They say, what are you doing? They say, I'm trying to get to be sick. 
But nobody prepared for sickness. Am I correct? No. But you see, if you're going to get healed, you must get ready for it. Am I correct? A few years ago, 2020, there was COVID-19 and millions died. Nobody prepared for it. But for people to stay alive and for us to overcome COVID, the world spent billions to be able to conquer it. But nobody spent one naira for COVID-19 to come. There are many medical doctors who died of COVID-19. So you see, you don't prepare for sickness. But do you know what? You have to prepare for healing. And the challenge, and one thing many people have not come to discover is this. You don't have to wait until sickness strikes you before you prepare for it. And, and that was what happened. The world was not expecting COVID-19. It came. It came millions before the world was able to conquer it. Are you hearing me now? And today, we are all alive because we have been able to manage it. But listen to me. If COVID-19 have sent a signal that it was going to hit the world, and millions are going to die, people will prepare for it. Am I talking? Now, you see, that is responsible probably for the attendance you are seeing tonight. When we say healing convention or healing conference, now many people probably do not come because they say, oh, I'm not sick. I don't have a sick person. What am I coming for? But the day sickness comes, they will call pastor. Pastor, please, oh, check us in the hospital. Oh, pastor will say, Mama, I'm still in Mina. I will come. Please, can you help me to go rush to go and check so and so in the hospital? Then probably they will call the prayer band to start praying. So, so and so and so person is in the hospital. You see, we don't have to wait until that happens. We don't have to wait until that happens. Now is the right time to be equipped. Now is the right time to be equipped. And that is why we decided to be taking Healing is Here conference from church to church so that we can equip believers and not wait until sickness comes. Hallelujah. Now that's why we're taking it upon ourselves. That's why we're even ready to sponsor it, everything. Let believers just be equipped and be in good health and stay alive and fulfill their days to accomplish God's purpose for their life. Now, that is the purpose. That is the purpose. That is the purpose. And you see, one serious thing again about healing is this. If you make a bad investment and you lose your investment, you can get another money and reinvest. But you see, if you miss your healing, someone might just be five feet below. <laughs> that is why you can go to university and you have BA in Yoruba or BA in Gagi in maybe three years, Abi, Three years. But you can't have Med, med uh, what's it called? MBBS, Abi? MBBS in three years. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? Because if you don't speak correct English or correct baggy, there's no problem. You can be corrected and you will try to speak it right. But if a medical doctor makes a mistake, cut the place is not supposed to cut, the operation failed, how do you interpret that? The life is gone. Are you still there? So you see, so it needs high precision high precision the same thing in the scriptures we need to take time to study and to understand healing 
and to understand healing. The challenge is this. Healing doesn't just fall on you. Are you still there? Healing does, doesn't just fall on you. Let me show you two passages. Luke 5. Let's look at Luke 5. This is outside my subject, but let me show it to you. Luke 5. Since the Spirit of God is taking me through there, maybe you'll be able to encourage more people to come. We have three days for this, and you really, really need, like I said, you don't need to be sick to be in this seminar. You just need enough spiritual sense and intelligence to be here. Like I said, you don't have to wait. Now, can you imagine if the day you have down here is the day they want to make a research to know what drug can cure diarrhea. Of course, many people will be dying of diarrhea. Because diarrhea, you are passing a lot of feces, a lot of water, you are losing water, you are losing everything. If it is not treated very fast, it used to be a deadly disease before. But because there has been a research, even if you are passing diarrhea now, you can go to ordinary, not even chemists. Uh, what's this other one that is below chemist? Eh? There's pharmacy, there's chemist, this other small one that uh, patent store. Am I correct? Patent store. Where some other people just have some certificate to practice it. Hallelujah. Patent store. You say, Oga, ah, Oga, I'm passing down here. If you just bring this as I claim, bring this one and bring it, I'll give it to you. Say, go and take it, and then you're okay. Now, if they have not done that research before that diarrhea comes, it will be claiming people's life. If I would believe that it was, the, it was the witches in the village that were killing people. <laughs> Am I correct? Oh, oh. Now, look at, look at, five, look at Luke 5, 15. Luke 5. <clears throat> Are you there? Luke 5, 15. So the purpose of this three days meeting is not because people are sick, so we want to heal them. No, 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 no. The purpose of it, of, of it is that we want to equip you to know what you need to know. Even if the devil strike tomorrow morning, you know what, how to handle it. You know how to handle it. You, do, you don't have to call pastor. He doesn't have to rush down from me now. No, no, you don't have to send to prayer. But no, no, you, you handle it yourself. That is because you know that you know you know that you know what you need to know. Very simple. Luke 5, 15, what did he say? But so much more, but so much the more, when there are a fame abroad of him, a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to do what? To do what? To do what? To do what? And then to what? And to be healed by him of their infirmities. Did you see there? They came to do what? To hear and to be healed. They came to hear and to be healed. Now, that is Luke 5 what? Eh? 5, 16. Okay, let's go to 6, 6, 16. Luke 6, 16. Sorry, Luke 6, 17. Did you see in that Luke 5, 15, they came to hear and to be healed. Now look at Luke 6, 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people again. Did you see that? And a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to what? Talk to me, church. Who came to do what? They came to do what? To do what? And what? Of their diseases. Did you see it? In Luke 5, 15, they came to hear and to be healed. In Luke 6, 17, it was a different scene, different day. The people came to hear and to be healed. Now, meaning that the pattern of Jesus' healing ministry is after this pattern. 
the people know that they will need to first of all come to hear him and then to be healed are you listening to me now they just don't come to be healed and go back to their house no jesus christ was first of all make them to hear because getting healed is not the main job no that is why i'm here i'm here to get you healed are you listening to me now? I'm not here for you to get you here. I'm here to get you here. Are you listening to me now? Getting here is one thing. And staying here is another thing. Are you listening to me now? You see, staying here is more important than getting here. Because by the anointing of God and by the revelation of the word of God in my life, people will be here tonight. If anybody is sick at all. Are you listening to me now? But, but, but the main reason why I am here, where I will be here in the next three days, is for you to stay healed. Are you listening to me now? If after these three days, sickness comes, you know how to be healed. Are you listening to me now? So Jesus Christ didn't just come to heal the people. He knows that he has only three and a half years to spend in ministry. So, his real challenge is not to get the people here. It's to get the people to stay here. Hallelujah. And to know subsequently how to be healed. Which is the reason why we're here tonight. Which is the reason why we'll be here in the next three nights. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So, tonight, I want to start us on a series of teaching, which I call, You Are Already Here. You are already healed. Isaiah 53 verses 4 to 5. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are here. Now look at that verse. It says, surely he had borne our griefs. Our griefs. Now, currently, the country is grieving. Because we lost the CEO of Access Bank. The, the world is grieving. When, when sickness strikes and it kills people, People grieve. So the Bible says, surely he had borne our griefs. In other words, there will not be grieving again in your lives and your house and your families. Oh, your image is not good enough. Not only that, I carried our sorrows. Now that's, what, that's what sickness brings. It brings sorrow. When somebody is sick or when you are sick, you are sorrowful. We see people's face, their face is wrinkled. He said, what is going on? He said, he say, I'm having a bad, a bad toothache. But that will no longer be your portion in Jesus' name. It's like your amen needs some recharge card. Okay. Yet we did esteem him. Stricken. Smitten of God. And afflicted. That is for us. That is for us. But he was wounded. He was wounded for our, for, for our transgressions. Our transgressions. Is it because you can't, you, can't, you can't separate transgressions from sickness? Sickness was not part of God's plan, but it was sin that brought sickness. But thank God the Bible said that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Now, he has to first of all deal with that. He has to first of all deal with that. Because without taking sickness, sorry, without taking sin out of the way, without paying for your sin, he will not be able to handle your sickness. You will not be able to handle your healing, sorry. 
So he first of all dealt with that. He took care of that. Hallelujah. And that's why as a Christian, when you sin, you don't allow it to hang in, to hang on. You quickly deal with it and put it behind you and move ahead. And you don't allow the devil to use it as a way of sticking sickness to you. You let him know he's been wounded for my transgressions. He has been bruised for my iniquities. Hallelujah. That the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Hallelujah. Now, another word for peace is healing. This Hebrew word here, translated peace here, is also the Hebrew word translated healing. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Hallelujah. And with his stripes, and with his stripes, we are healed. Why healed us? Why healed us? Why healed us? It was his stripes that healed us. Now let me ask you a question. Did you know when he took that stripes? Where did he take it? Eh? On the cross? He didn't take the stripes on the cross. When he was what? When he was going to... No. You don't know where Jesus took the stripes? Huh? He took the stripes in Pontius Pilate's palace. Can you remember that now? When Pontius Pilate said, I can't find any sin in him. This man is not guilty of this offense people are saying. But all the same, I will beat him and I will release him. They said, if you release him, we will tell, uh, what's it called? The king. Uh, sorry, we will tell Caesar that you are not Caesar's friend. That was when he received the stripes. Because this was Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied it. That Jesus was going to receive stripes. Not because he stole somebody's fish. So they have to beat him. Am I, are you hearing me now? Or... Or he collected somebody's granola, he didn't pay. So when they caught him, they beat him. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. In fact, Pontius Pilate said, I can't see any sin in this man. He's not guilty of any sin. But do you know what? Pontius Pilate cannot let him go. You know why he can't let him go? Because Isaiah has already prophesied it. And prophecy must be fulfilled. So it was not actually Pontius Pilate who got Jesus Christ beaten. It was Isaiah who prophesied it that got him beaten. Am I making sense to somebody? Talk to me now. Pontius Pilate said Jesus Christ was not guilty. He has not committed any offense. So because he has not committed an offense, Jesus Christ should go free. He said, but all the same, I will beat him. But he didn't know that he had no option. He has to beat him because Isaiah has already prophesied it. And while he was beating Jesus, he, did it, he said Jesus Christ has committed no offense. The only offense that Jesus Christ committed, do you know the offense? The only offense he committed is the sickness that I will still have. So that was why he has to beat him. That is why he has to beat him because Isaiah has prophesied it. So, so, so Pontius Pilate has to beat him. And the reason for that beating, obviously, he didn't commit any offense. Except that, that beating is meant for my healing today. So, Jesus was not going to be on the surface of the earth in the year 2024. But he wrote a post check 
for my healing. That period. So that today I can cash it. <sighs> Am I making sense to you? Talk to me. Am I making sense to you? But your spell said the man didn't commit any offense. If he didn't commit any offense, why should he beat him? So if he didn't commit offense and he beat him, then Pastor Pilate is guilty. But you see, Pastor Pilate is not guilty because Isaiah has already prophesied it. So while Pastor Pilate was actually beating him, he was actually fulfilling Isaiah chapter 54. Can somebody help me with the bottle of water? Are you going to say now? Is he open? Did you, did you get it now? So Pontius Pilate beat him because Isaiah prophesied it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The weather is very hot. Hallelujah. Did you, did you catch it now? Was Jesus guilty? How did you know Jesus was not guilty? Pilate said it. But what did Pilate still do? He beat him. Why did he beat him? Eh? Because Isaiah has prophesied it. Now listen to me. Isaiah is not a minor prophet. Isaiah is a major prophet. Are you, are you still there? Now listen to me. It has to take a major it has to take a major, uh, what's it called, prophet like Isaiah to prophesy that a virgin will have a baby. <laughs> a minor a man of prophet will not have that kind of confidence. To look at a lady and say, a lady will have a baby without having anything to do with a man. Ah. Even if I stand here now, if God give me that prophecy to give it now, I won't give it. <laughs> hey, am I talking? Hey, I would say no, that one must be coming from my head. <laughs> but as I did, the same man who prophesied that, that Mary is going to have a, a child without sleeping with a man also prophesied that by his stripes you were here. And that prophecy was fulfilled in Pontius Pilate's palace. Are you sitting there? Now, if Isaiah prophesied it and Pontius Pilate carried it out, are you listening to me now? Now, listen to me. I have, I have no doubt in my heart that I will be healed. Because the man who prophesied that a virgin will have a baby and a baby did, a virgin did. The same man prophesied by strap, you are here. And yet, Jesus was not getting, but they beat him. So what do you think I will stop the third one? Which is your healing? Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing. It's the same thing. It's the same as that who prophesied it. Hallelujah. So if Jesus Christ did not escape the beating that was prophesied by Isaiah, and he was beaten, are you listening to me now? Then listen to me. <laughs> I'm more than confident that there's healing today. I'm more than confident. Hallelujah. Not because I'm bored on my own. No, because I know Isaiah was a major prophet who prophesied a virgin will have a child, and he did. He prophesied Jesus will be beaten. He was beaten. Abba. Ladies and gentlemen, if that first one was fulfilled, the second one was fulfilled, my friend, go to bed. You are healed. <laughs> go to bed. You can, listen to me. You can put it in the bank. 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 It's the same passage. It's the same passage. It's not two different passages. It's the same passage. Hallelujah. It's the same passage. Hallelujah. Okay. 
Now, let's get it straight so that we can get the best of this verse. Now, he said, and with his tribes, we are here. A R E. Is that not what they said? Huh? Good. Now let's go to First Peter 2 24. 1 Peter 2 24. Are you there? First Peter 2 24. Can I read? Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are here. Now, did you identify this first Peter 224? Huh? Can you see this first Peter 224? Huh? Where is it coming from? Huh? From where? Isaiah. Now, who was the first person to live between Isaiah and Peter? Isaiah. Isaiah lived before Jesus. Am I correct? Now, why Peter was writing this passage? Was it before Jesus? Huh? Talk to me now. Was Peter writing this passage in 1 Peter 24 before Jesus came? Eh? After Jesus has come and gone. Is that correct? Good. Now, when Isaiah prophesied, Isaiah said, by his tribe, you are. You are here. You are here. You are. Now, that is in the future. But you see, that is a posterior check. A pastor gives you a posterior check and write much first on it. Can you take it to bank today? When can you take it to bank? March 1st or after March 1st? Good. Now, when Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 53 verse 4 to 5, we can't take his check. We can't take it to bank. If you stand on that Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5, you won't be here. It's a posterior check. Did you get it now? So that's why when Isaiah prophesied, Isaiah said, by stripe, you are. You are healed. You are healed. But in Matthew 27, Jesus came. Now, when pastor gave you a possessed check, he gave you a possessed check for 100,000 naira, And he put it for March 1st. Then by 1st of March, very early in the morning before they opened the bank, he was in the bank to put in the 100,000 naira. <laughs> Did you get it now? Now, as I prophesied it, by strike, you are healed. It's a posterior check. In Matthew 26, Christ came and put money in the bank for that Isaiah 53, verse 4. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Did you get it now? That was why he got the beating. Because Isaiah has given us a positive check. So in Matthew 27, Christ came and put the money inside the bank. Are you hearing me now? So after Christ, listen to me. Turn to Matthew 8. Are you enjoying this? Good. Matthew 8. We have three now, so we'll just go softly and get this understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. But with all that getting, do what? 
Get understanding. <laughs> now you get it now. Okay, Matthew 8. Hallelujah. Look at verse 16. Are you there? When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and cast out the spirit with his word, and healed how many? How many of them? All. No exception. All. And healed all that were sick. Let me ask you a question. Is it possible for all to have faith? People have not changed. It's still the same people. <laughs> but the Bible says he healed all. How was he able to do it? And he healed all that was sick. Here the next verse. What did he say? The next statement says that what? Verse 17. Eh? That it might be fulfilled. Why he healed all? It's not because all has faith. Oh. No, it's not possible. The people in the Bible days are not different from people today. Why he heal all that it might be fulfilled? Listen to me. It is not their faith that he healed them. It was a fulfillment of the scripture. God was not looking at their faith. God was looking at the fulfillment of the scripture. <laughs> Did you see now? That it might be fulfilled, which was what? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by what? By Isaiah the prophet saying, Himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses, and he stopped there. And he stopped there. The next question, the next question is this Where is that person that says, By his stripes you are healed? It's not here. You know why it was not here? Because not until Jesus Christ got to Matthew 27, he did not put money in the bank to cash that part. So when Christ was healing them in this Matthew 8:16, he was only healing them with the early part of that Isaiah. He couldn't move to the second part because it would take by a scribe to do that one. So that one, he fulfilled it in Matthew 27 by taking the stripes. But when he took the stripe, he did not go back to the street to heal the sick. They nailed him to the cross, sent him to the graveyard. He resurrected, he went to heaven. Now, meaning that it was paid on my own behalf when he's out of this earth. Are you listening to me now? So, Pastor quickly went and put money in the bank by first of March, earning the money so that the check will not bounce. Are you listening to me now? Now, that is what happened. Now, when we are now reading the, the first Peter, let's go back to that first Peter 2.24. When we are now reading that first Peter 2.24, first Peter 2.24 says, by whose stripes, by whose stripes, you were he didn't say, you are. He said, by whose stripes you were. Did you see now? Now, when Isaiah prophesied on this side before Jesus Christ came, he said, by stripes you are. You are is a post check. But when Isaiah came, Isaiah said, by stripes you were. Meaning that, it is done. So it's like by, by, by the time you cash the money, you only get pastor a call to say, pastor, it is done. Did you see what I'm saying now? So Isaiah, so, so when Peter was writing it, Peter did not say, by his stripe you are healed. Is that not what Peter said? Talk to me, church. Is that what Peter said? Did he say, by strap you are healed? But what did Isaiah say? By strap you are. But when Peter was re, re, quoting, when Peter was now quoting Isaiah, Peter did not say, 
Peter did not say what Isaiah said. Because Isaiah said, by his strap, you are healed. Are you listening to me now? But when Peter came, Peter was quoting Isaiah, but do you know what? He didn't quote Isaiah verbally. He put intelligence and his own understanding into what Isaiah said, and he said it by saying, by his strap, you were. Mean that he was referring to telling you that it has been done. And that's why when he saw a man at the gate called beautiful, he didn't tell the man, oh, Jesus, I want you to heal this man today. No, 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 no. Let's go to that, let's go to that ax, let's see. Let's go to that ax, let's see. Let's go to that ax, let's see. Ax 4. Am I crazy? Ax 4. Acts 3, thank you. Oh, there are people who know Bible in this church. Acts 3. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Okay, maybe we'll start from verse 1. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being, in, being the night hour. And, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb, who was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask out of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple? Ask and arms, and Peter, listen to this, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on Jesus. Did he say look on Jesus? What did they say they look on? Look on us. Look on us, look on us, look on us. <laughs> look on us. Because he knows what he knows. He said, look on us, look on us, look on us, look on us, look on us. And he gave heed unto, unto him, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but I have a knowledge. But such as I have given I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. Do you see what I'm saying now? He said, rise up and what? And walk. Listen to me. Did Peter pray to Jesus to heal this man? Talk to me now. He didn't even tell the man to look on Jesus. He said, look on us. He said, you, look on us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He didn't say, prayer band. As, even, as a matter of fact, prayer meeting was going on inside the, inside, the, inside the church. And the man was crippled at the outside. But Peter knows that the man doesn't need prayer. <laughs> he doesn't need prayer. <laughs> did, did he pray for him to be healed? Did he pray for him? Did he pray to God to heal him? Did he pray to God to heal him? No. No. <laughs> no, he didn't pray to God. No, that's, you, see, you see, that's why people are trying to get healed today and they can't get healed because they are praying to God. To heal them. And do you know what? God is not going to heal you today because He had already done it. That's what Peter said. Peter said, By a strike, you were. What is the meaning of that one? You were means He has already done it. So listen to me, my brother. You will never get God to do what He has already done. No, you won't get him. No matter how much emotional, no matter how is it, hey, Father God, they allow me to die like this, oh. God help me. Oh. You will die. Oh. Because listen to me. It was, it, is, it was his stripes that healed you. Do you know what? He's not coming back the second time to take that stripe. He has taken it once, and for all. Are you listening to me now? And it has not expired. Are you hearing me now? So, when sickness comes, don't look unto God. Go to the mirror and look and say, David Nuga, look on me. Look on me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you sickness. Get out of this body now. Why? Because he has already done it. You have to receive it. Stop praying to him again. You can't ask him to come and... Are you telling me he's come and take the stripe again? Why? <laughs> no, you can't ask him to come and take the stripe again. He has taken it once and for all. 
That was why he took it before he left the planet Earth. And he's not coming back the second time to take it. Let me show you that again. Look at 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. Are you enjoying this? Thank you. Sorry, Romans 10. Romans 10. So ladies and gentlemen, I don't pray to God for healing. No, Peter did not pray to God to heal that man. In fact, the prayer meeting was going on inside the church. Peter was outside. Peter did not say, please, can you help us send for prayer band leader? We have an emergency to attend to here. Is that what he did? And he said, hey, did you go and call the prayer band so that they can attend to an emergency? <laughs> There's no emergency deal. The emergency has already been taken care of by Jesus. You need to take authority. He says, such as I have. <laughs> he says, such as I have, I will give to you. <laughs> when did he have it? When Christ received the stripes. So he just gave it to the man. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? When somebody says, I have a headache. You don't say, please, can you help me send for medical doctor? He said he has a headache. No. At least you first of all give him Panadol. Now the Panadol people say, if after three or four days, the, Panadol, the headache passes back, they say, okay, you can now call for your doctor. So the first person to call for is not doctor. Call for Panadol. <laughs> Are you hearing me now? So Peter said, look on us. Just look on us. He said, I have something I can give to you. I can take care of this one. Me, I have something I can take care of this. I don't need, I don't need anybody. I can take care of it. He said, such as I have, I'll give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and take your bed. And the man was he just jacked the man up. The man was walking and leaving, walking and leaving. Before he knew what's going on, the man was walking perfectly. Because Peter knows he has it. And that's why he told us in his book, say, by his stripes, ye were. By his stripes, ye were. Ye were. He didn't say you are now. It was as I would say you are. Because Christ was yet to come. But now Christ has come, he has taken the stripes, as I say, by stripe ye were. I listen to me now. You never see me say, by stripe I'm healed, by stripe I'm healed, by stripe I'm healed. No, 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 no. By stripe I was healed. By stripe I was healed. By stripe I was healed. Because actually by stripe I was. If by stripe I was healed, my brother, by stripe I stay healed. I listen to me now. I don't care what the sickness looks like. <laughs> That's why he took 53 stripes. 53. Sorry. Uh, 49, right? 49 stripes. Hallelujah. Okay, look at it. As I, uh, Romans 10. Verse 6. Hallelujah. Are you still there? Are you hearing me loud and clear? Good. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above. Mm, you can't do it. There's nothing you can do to bring him down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what's yet it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. And you are raised for my justification. I believe that in my heart and with my mouth I confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I believe God I'm saved. And then you tell them to go home, they are saved. Is that not all you tell them? That's all. The same thing with healing. Because you know that he has received the stripes for your healing. What heals you is the stripes of Christ. He has received it. He's not coming back to receive it. How do you receive it? You receive it with your mouth. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke backache. Backache, leave my back now. And don't come back again. Thank you, Father. Because by your strike, I was healed. Hallelujah. 
Sister, how are you feeling now? Great. But your back is doing gum gomo. You know, gum, gum. Ah, are you? Oh, I'm very strong. Hallelujah. Are you sure? Perfectly. Because the word is nigh thee. Now in your mouth, that is the word of faith which will preach. Hallelujah. You receive your healing with your mouth. You stay with your confession. I listen to me now. Christ did not receive that stripes in vain. I used to there. He prophesied a virgin will have a baby. It came to pass. He prophesied by his stripes. Christ received the stripes. Are you hearing me now? Can you also believe that by stripes you are healed also? Did he receive the stripes? Did Jesus receive the stripes? Now, are you, are you going to receive the healing too? Period. When are you going to receive the healing? I've already received it. I just affirm it with my mouth. Because you see, you were not saved today. You were saved from the foundation of the earth. Christ came to establish it. Are you listening to me now? I say, are you listening to me now? So that is why, listen to me, that is why you don't pray for healing from the position of the need for healing. You pray for healing from the position of an answer. Did you get that now? Acts 16, 18. Let me show you another one. Sorry, Act 14. Acts 14, 8. <clears throat> Are you there? Can I read it? Acts 14, 8. And there sat a certain man at least trying to put it in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked in his life. He never had walked. Look at verse 9. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Now look at verse 10. And said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he lived and walked. Did you get that? Did you read that? Now, where did Paul pray for this man to be healed? In this passage. Did you see where Paul prayed for the man to be healed? Huh? You didn't see where I prayed for Paul to be healed? But was the man healed? So, what did he do? Huh? He only told the man, what are you waiting for? Stand on your feet and walk. Because I'm not going to ask him to do it. He has already done it. So you better take it now. The man stood on his lips and he walked away. <laughs> he didn't say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke all the demon spirit from your mother's house, from your, in the name of Jesus. Maybe it was mother that sinned. That you are born blind. I mean, you are born crippled. Or maybe you overkick your mother. So she slapped you and broke your leg. Father, if anybody sin, forgive them. No, he has, listen to me. If you didn't forgive your sin, you can't be here. He took care of that one. It, there's no problem with that one. I listen to me now. By scribe, you're already here. All you need to do now is to do what? Take it. If you have such truth, the devil said, how oh, every water you drink is the pain of sore throat. Do you know what you should do? Order for yam. What do you do? Order for yam. The devil said, ah, if you take this yam, it will pain you. He said, devil, by stripes, I was here. I'm taking my healing now. Mama, give me yam. I'm talking to you about what I've experienced. You may take the first one. It may look painful. But listen to me, by the time you take the second one, you discover there was no pain again. That's what Peter said. Peter said, the Bible said, oh God, oh God. Let's go back to that Acts. <laughs> Let's go to that Acts 5. And then we'll off from there and continue tomorrow. Let's go that, back to that Acts 5. Let's go back to that Acts 5. Acts 3, sorry. Did you, see, did you see in that Acts, 
Acts 14. He didn't pray. So why are we wasting our time praying for, for people to be healed? Are you going to get God to do it again? No, yes, we didn't do it. We better get it. We better take it now. Now. He said, rise up and take your bed. Look at, look at that Acts 3. And then we close there. Acts 3, what, what, what verse did you stop that time? And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto him, expecting to receive something from the, of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold, I don't have a, me, I don't have money, but I have understanding. But such as I have, give I thee. He has an understanding. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now look at that. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Did you see that? He has already said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He didn't wait for Jesus to raise the man up. He raised the man up himself. Because Jesus has finished his own. <laughs> we have to finish our own. He, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. When he lifted him up, what happened? And immediately, when he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, his bone and ankle didn't receive strength. But Peter didn't pray to Jesus because you know Jesus has accomplished his own work. So what did Peter do? Peter gave him a helping hand and jacked the man up. The Bible says, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, not until then. Did you see that? Now look at the next verse. And he doing what? Talk to me now. He doing what? Leaping. He's li just a minute, just a minute. He's sleeping and walking the same thing. If a man is sleeping, is that healing? No. But look at it. And he leaping up stood and did what? And walked. And entered with them into the temple. How did he enter into the temple? Read it. Walking and what? Walking and leaping. I don't know the distance of the temple to the gate. But the Bible said the man was walking. <coughs> he tagged. Keep dragging. He said, follow me. He said, let's pray to Jesus. Too. He said, no, Jesus has finished his work. Follow me. <coughs> walking and leaping. And doing what? And praising God. <laughs> he was doing three things. He was walking and leaping and saying, ah, God, thank you at least. I never walked before. Now, they've been doing prayer and that prayer. I don't know how to do it. He was walking and leaping. He said, to God be the glory. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Walking and leaping and praising God. Now, look at verse 9. Ooh, I like verse 9. What did he say? Let's read it together. And all the people saw him do what? And what? Where's the leaping? Where's the leaping? It's gone. It's gone. The leaping is gone. The leaping is gone. The leaping is gone. They did not pray to Jesus. Because Jesus has already received the stripes. By, listen to me. Pastor has given you a positive check. He said, March 1st, go and cash the 100,000 naira. First, in the morning by 8, pastor was in the bank to put the money in. Ladies and gentlemen, what are you still waiting for? Go inside the bank, cash your money, go home. And listen to me now. Healing is here. It's not in heaven. No. It's here. There is no one sickness that Christ did not receive the strife for. He received the strife for all the sicknesses. He received the strife for all the sicknesses. Are you listening to me now? Healing is here now. Are you hearing me now? Once the devil strike, just laugh. Tell him, devil, you came too late. You came too late. You came too late. 
Don't say, Father, I hope this sickness will not kill me. No, how can it kill you? That's why Jesus took the stripes. All you need to do, lay your hands on it and tell the sickness to leave your body. If it's your child, tell the sickness to leave the body of your child. If it is anybody, tell the sickness to leave their body and tell them to stand up and receive it. That's what Peter told the man. The same Peter who told us, by stripes ye were. By stripes ye were. Jack the man up and the man was walking, leaping, and praising God. Walking, leaping, and praising God. By the time the people could see him, the man was doing. Hallelujah. No more leaping. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, every time I've got healed, I can't tell you the point at when the sickness left. But all I know is that I never accepted it. I never accepted the sickness. I only rebuke it and I face my business. Stand on your feet tonight. I will start praying for the sick tomorrow night. I've laid a foundation. This is already cut out to eight. Tomorrow night, by 5.30, we are here. By 6.30, the meeting is on so that I can start praying for them. Can we ask question before you? No, tomorrow. Eh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. He wants to ask questions, but we can do it tomorrow. You know, we have three nights, so I don't want to keep us late. My brother, you got it, ma? Eh, tomorrow, please. I don't want to keep us late. I want, how many of you are, how many of you enjoy what you heard tonight? Good. You understood it very well? Go online. It is there, Reverend David Lake Nuga on YouTube. You will hear it clean and clear. In fact, you will see yourself in the YouTube. This message is there. I think you put me on your WhatsApp group. Katampe. I used to see you on Facebook. Is it, is it, is it not your child that is Katampe here? Good. Aha. You see it there. Go over it again. Tomorrow night, I will take the question and then we'll go and do the teaching. Maybe by the time I even finish teaching tomorrow, it will have answered your question. Then I will take time and pray for the sick. You know why I don't want to pray for the sick now? I want you to put to work what you heard tonight. So that tomorrow you came and said, Pastor, it works. <laughs> it works. Listen to me. Listen to me. I told you ever since I got saved, since 1982, I've never had one person lay hands on me to be healed. No, that is not. God's plan is not that people should be laying hands on you. God's plan is that you should be laying hands on the sick. What you heard tonight, what you heard tonight, do you need pastor for you to be able to pray for the sick? No. <laughs> Peter said, look on us, look on us. I don't have money. She, she, to go to the doctor, I don't have. But do you know what? I have something. How many of you know that you have something from this night? He said, look on us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and rise up and walk. And he, he put the guy up. He was walking and leaping. He said, you, you go walk. Oh. You go walk. Before you know what? The guy was walking. Listen to me. The struggle is over. I said, the struggle is over. The last time you have that struggle with that sickness is the last time you have it. After this night, you just turn up and say, no. Nah. When you are sick and tired, you walk out of this house. For me, I know they carry you again with me. <laughs> you just walk out of, you walk out of sickness. You can walk out of sickness. You can walk out of it. You don't need to carry it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, lift up your hands tonight and just bless God. We we'll continue tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, I will start praying for the sick. I'll pray for the sick tomorrow night and next tomorrow. But I want you to go home now, assimilate what you have, so that tomorrow, you can tell people and say, look, they didn't stay late. Before 8, we have left the hall. So that more people can come. That is the reason why we are doing it. And this thing is recorded, it's online. You can go there again, listen to it again, listen to it again, listen to it again. Reverend Rev, R-E-V, Reverend David Leke Nuga. On YouTube, you can watch it again. This message, this night, you can watch it live. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for everything you have done here tonight. Thank you because we know that there are already healing in the house. We know it. 
We know already that there are already people who have walked out of sickness right now. Who have looked at their body and told the sickness, bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can you put your hand together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.